Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and um, thanks for joining me today at VegFest UK. I just thought I'd talk about my background first and why I'm speaking here today. Um, I am a published author and I'm an international speaker and consultant and I've been doing that for a while. I um, speak about marketing, communication, writing, etiquette and events and um, I do a lot of topics and give a lot of lectures and workshops on a variety of topics including vegan um, health and lifestyle as staging effective events um, and along with marketing and other things and um, I've been doing that for quite a while and um, then I just thought I'd let you know about my vegan history as well so I went um, vegetarian in 1994 and um, I went vegetarian originally because um, I every Saturday night my family and I used to have a leg of lamb roast and um, I knew it was a lamb because that's what it was called and I asked my mum one night what part of the leg of lamb we were eating that my sister and I both liked to eat and she said it was the Achilles tendon and I looked down at my own Achilles tendon um, and I looked across at the leg of lamb and that was the time I made the connection between the life that once was and the death I was about to consume. So I stopped eating red meat um, then and then I went on a camp later on that year for a month where we went into the country like city kids looking um, going into the country and looking after animals and amongst other things and we looked after chickens there and that I stopped eating chicken flesh and um, a few years after that when I finished school in 1997 um, after the a couple of months after school I found out about the dairy and the egg industries and I wasn't aware of how much harm they caused before and I went vegetarian originally because um, I didn't want to hurt anyone and I didn't want to cause any harm I didn't want anyone to be killed for me and when I found out that um, the dairy and the egg industries were very cruel and horrific and sometimes worse than death then I went vegan and I've been vegan for 20 years in January and I've noticed a lot has changed over that time and um, a lot of it is based mostly on dietary aspects and I think more focus needs to be on ethics and um, because of this focus on health and diet and things like that a lot of people are, are watering down the movement and the ethics in the movement so um, I, I became vegan originally because of animal rights but I'm also interested in social justice issues and intersectionality issues and that just means how other movements can work together and we can learn from each other. So I think um, veganism is just one step and I think it's a great step but it's just one step and I think it's a great way of leading by example and putting your compassion into action. And um, at the moment I'm in Melbourne, I'm here for World Vegan Day, which is the biggest Australian event, um, a vegan event, and we're expecting about 10,000 people tomorrow, so it's pretty exciting. And uh, I'm giving my ethics beyond the, the plate talk there, and I've been doing a bit of a vegan speaking tour at the moment. So I've been to a lot of places throughout Australia and um, Bali for that. Um, and that brings me to my website, um, vivalavegan.net. And um, I started this website at the end of 2005. And I graduated from studying naturopathy, nutrition, and Western herbal medicine. And I um, decided I was going to create um, a recipe calendar. And um, I always wanted to release a recipe book and I thought I'm going to release a calendar first, it's only 12 recipes, that should be easy. And so that was the end of 2005 for 2006 and I released 2006, 7 and 8 calendars. And um, when I was promoting the calendars, um, people asked me to add things 
things and um, I started the vivalavegan.net website because I had my Le Chantel website but that was mostly for my music and I started the Viva La Vegan website and it really just evolved over the years so people would ask me to write blogs, they would ask me to do an article, they'd ask me to add recipes and I did and I got a lot of feedback from people for lots of different things and the website just sort of evolved over the years and it grew um, quite organically and it was it was a great online community for vegans to meet and you know this started 10 years ago over 10 years ago when we really didn't have as many vegan blogs and vegan lifestyle blogs and a lot of people find that hard to understand because there are so many nowadays and um, yeah so I I just listened to what people said they wanted to see and what they wanted to read and I just added it and it yeah it was a really organic um, growth of the website which was cool so last year the end of last year celebrated our 10th anniversary of vivalavegan.net and um, some people um, call me um, the most prolific vegan blogger in Australia so there's over 10 years worth of content on the website there's blogs articles videos interviews podcasts how-to videos um, recipes FAQs talks there's so so much information on there so I hope you check it out and yeah I've been giving talks about the vegan lifestyle for over 10 years as well so this time of year is always pretty busy because of all the vegan events that happen around World Vegan Day which is the 1st of November um, and I've also released um, various books and ebooks I've released four print books so I've done a what do vegans eat book um, my adventures when I traveled in the US for a few years um, I did a there's a vegan in the kitchen cookbook which was a collection of my three recipe calendars in a hardcover colorful um, recipe book and my latest book I've just released is a vegan athletes book and um, it's the full title is expert tips from vegan athletes fitness fanatics and exercise enthusiasts and um, I also have been featured in other books and I've written many other ebooks and um, so I just thought I would talk about the Vegan Athletes book that I've released and um, it, you know, everything creative, I've released quite a few CDs and done a lot of music and videos in the past and I've learned over the years and when I've done my websites as well, you know, everything creative takes so much longer than you think it will and um, at the moment I'm working on some new books, programs and retreats for 2017. But I want to talk about um, my Vegan Athletes book and it took four years to create. So um, it began... Um, the start of the story began in 2012 when um, there was a vegan bodybuilding champion from Berlin in Germany, Michael Greismeyer, and um, I read about him online and I was really fascinated by his story, which a lot of other people were as well. And um, I just thought I'd like to ask him some specific questions. So I sent him some questions I'd like to know and I thought others would like to know as well. And I sent them to him and he got them back to me via translator and um, I found them really interesting, really inspiring. And I knew quite a few um, of my own personal vegan friends who are also interested in fitness and um, you know, exercise and athletic type things and I thought well I know quite a few people who could also answer these questions I'd like to know their what their responses would be as well and um, so I thought I would send out the information to a lot of people and then I got I got quite a few coming through and um, I had this idea that um, if I got to 100 athletes that I would compile a book of all the athletes and of all the interviews and um, yeah it was it was really great it was quite um, quite an enjoyable mostly exercise to do and um, 
I contacted a lot of people on Twitter and a website called Great Vegan Athletes and also the veganbodybuilding.com website and community and I found a lot of vegan athletes through those channels and a lot of them are in my book and actually at um, VegFest UK today um, we've got Robert Cheek, he's from um, Vegan Bodybuilding um, website, he's selling my Vegan Athletes book and um, so is Alex from Vegetarian Guide, so you can buy it there for £12 today. And Robert can sign the book for you and there's um, some other people in the book who are also giving talks today and who would be able to sign the book for you as well. Um, Fiona Oakes, she's an extreme marathon runner. Kate Strong, she's a women's world champion triathlete and Ironman. Christine Vardaros, she's a champion cyclist and cyclocross racer. And Pat Reeves, who's a power lifter. And um, they're four of the, um, I'm not sure how many UK and European um, athletes are in the book, but um, there's quite a few. And uh, Robert Cheek, he wrote the foreword for the book as well. So if you're around today and you buy the book, make sure you get them to um, sign the book for you. And so, um, back to the story about my book. I've got, um, I interviewed 137 vegan athletes, fitness fanatics and exercise enthusiasts from all over the world. And that was by the end of 2015, I'd compiled all my interviews and they were all online. Um, they're... Over, the, over that process, um, I contacted a lot, of, a lot of people and I got them to sign um, legal sort of information to say that they were okay with me including them in the book and um, I heard back from a few people. Some people didn't want to be included in the book. I had a few people who were not vegan anymore which was a bit upsetting and um, I also had um, people who I just didn't hear back from in time. So in the book, there's 111 athletes, and there, you know, many different types of people from um, Olympians, trainers, coaches, and it was really um, interesting to have people like um, husband and wives that I interviewed, both of them, and um, best mates and friends and partners, business partners, so it was really good and it was a good little community that was created from the book. Um, I had some really good uh, um, testimonials from a lot of different people and um, a few of them, uh, like Jim Morris, you might have heard of him, he was a um, lifelong fitness fanatic and bodybuilder and he just passed this year which was a bit upsetting, um, but he gave me a great testimonial and um, some other people like Dale Vince, he's the founder of Ecotricity and the chairman of Forest Rangers Football Club over your side of the world. Um, Alexandra Paul, she was on Baywatch, you may have heard of her, she's an athlete and a vegan. Um, Mark Hawthorne, he, he writes some really good books and um, he's written A Vegan Ethic and Bleating Hearts and he gave a great um, testimonial. John Robbins, who was the author of A Diet for a New America, and he's also the president of Food Revolution Network. He also gave good testimonial, as did Ingrid Newkirk from PETA, Neil Barnard from Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, or PCRM, um, Barney Duplice, who was Mr. Universe 2014 and a professional bodybuilder. He, I think he's from your side of the world, actually. Um, Peter Singer, who wrote Animal Liberation in the book, Michelle S. Risley, who's a lifestyle coach, and Nick Cooney, who's an author. He's written some really good books, like on um, psych um, psychological aspects of uh, veganism and um, activism and how things work. He's done a lot of um, research in what works, and he started the Humane League, and he's also got the Humane League Labs, um, who do a lot of um, articles and research into what's effective ways of activism and, and various things like that. Um, so I um, there's a picture of all some of the vegan athletes that are in the book and um, if you're having a look at that 
And there's a photo of Robert Cheek at the front of his old house before he just moved. There's a photo of DeAndre DeMarco and Regan Smith, who you may also know as Regan the Vegan. Um, there's a photo of Emily and Luke Tan, and um, they do a lot of cool stuff in um, Australia. They're about to be part of um, the, there's a vegan, sort of like the Athlete Summit, but there's a vegan section in World Vegan Day here in Melbourne tomorrow, so that's pretty good. And um, there's a few people in the book who are involved in Melbourne, so Luke and Emily and um, Billy Simmons and some other people. And um, yeah, there's a, a great selection of people that I'm glad were involved in the book and I'm glad got involved with the book. And um, I've had some really good, um, some really good feedback and some really good um, information from people about the book and it's selling really well in the UK at the moment and I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person um, but yeah if you wanted to get a book make sure you see the vegetarian guides and you can buy it for £12 and yeah get a few of those people to sign the book for you. Um, so I thought I'd maybe share a bit of the process with the book so I decided I'd compile the 100 athletes and I um, spent most of 2015 um, editing, getting people to fill in um, the, the, the um, forms and giving me their consent to use the interviews and I got um, a girl called Veronica, um, she illustrated the book and I hope you like the images. I saw. Um, a couple of things that I liked and some ideas and I gave her some ideas and yeah she illustrated the books and it's not um, her usual sort of style but I, I really liked what she did and I found her on Tumblr actually and I really like she normally just does sketches and black and white sort of stuff so I really liked what she did and um, someone I had been in contact with a few other vegan artists who I liked I liked their work and one of them suggested a guy called JC Len Lion Decker, I think is how you pronounce it, and he was someone in the US who used to illustrate the Sunday Evening Post, and he inspired the cover. Um, and I had a designer that I work with, with all my other books and a lot of other um, advertising and information that I do. Adele, she actually designed the book and put it all together for me, and. Um, I find, you know, it's really interesting that um, there's a lot of people who know a, a more about veganism nowadays, are aware of the term, and it's a term that's quite on trend, and people know about it, and, um, you know, whether or not there's more vegans, which I think is a, a point to be debated, because I, you know, there's a lot of studies that are showing meat consumption has gone up, for example, um, and I, th I do think there's a lot of um, people who eat a more plant-based diet or they eat more plant-based foods and meals um, but I don't think um, there's more vegans than there were because we're still one to two percent of the population and that's a pretty that number hasn't really changed for 20 years and um, <coughs> I've been vegan 20 years and I just find it really, um, you know, outstanding, sometimes shocking that um, there's so many great vegan options now and um, in Melbourne at the moment there's so much food to eat, so many places to go and especially when you go to remote areas um, in the world and you find that there's options, like vegan options and 20 years ago you really just wouldn't get that so that's, that's quite impressive and um, it's yeah it's really really interesting and I found it really good to find out what people like to eat and um, some of the questions I asked people in the book <coughs> so I asked people why they went vegan that's you know the main sort of part for me so why did you go vegan um, why how did you decide what what made you change and you know it was really interesting to find out 
why people went vegan. A lot of people changed because of their diets and um, a lot of people had something they wanted to cure or they needed to they needed help with and veganism really helped them in that aspect I asked you know how long they've been diet um, how long they've been a vegan what's benefited them the most from being vegan and what veganism means to them so it was really interesting to hear a lot of people um, give their reasons why they're vegan and what it means to them and the benefits and you know from for a lot of not a lot of people but quite a um, at least a third in the book um, spoke about the dietary aspects and the health aspects and how that changed their lives but I, the thing I like about the book is that there's so many different types of people um, who are vegan for like ethics or animal rights like I am and there's also people that care about health and other aspects and yeah it's, it's just a really good co collection of different different types of athletes and fitness related people and and you know I found it really interesting because I'm you know not an athlete myself and I found it interesting why people do things and what sort of training they do so another section I asked people about was their training so what sort of training they do how often they train do they offer their fitness or training services to other people and what sports do they play in you know some people Andrew Knight in particular he he's over your side of the world and you know he he does some crazy stuff and he you know climbs up big cliffs with an ironing board literally on his back so you know some people don't just you know go into the gym and lift weights like they do some really interesting things as well and um, I find it really um, inspiring and I know a lot of other people have as well just you know to get them started on their fitness goals or what they would like to achieve and just seeing what other people do and maybe just doing something like that once a, once a week for the next month and then adding in something else for the, the month after and just keeping adding something all the time. <laughs> And um, yeah, a lot of people train every single day. Like the majority of people that were in this book and I've interviewed in the book were um, very focused on getting back to training as soon as they could. And that was one of the benefits that a lot of people mentioned in the book was that, um, you know, plant-based protein gives them a better fuel to use and also gets them back to training quicker. And it's more efficient when they're doing it. Um, and then, Another section in the book that I asked people was about their strengths, weaknesses and outside influences. So, you know, a lot of people have misconceptions about veganism. So what are they? What do you get the most and how do you respond to these things? And, you know, what what is your strength as a vegan athlete? And a lot of people said, you know, they can, they can do more than a lot of their peers and that they can achieve more things and you know they really enjoy the fact that people go wow that person's vegan and they they beat me and they you know they do so much better than the people who aren't vegan and that's a, I think that's a really good thing for people to see um, and you know I asked people what their challenges were and if people in their industry are supportive or not and you know there's quite a lot of people in a variety of industries in particular bodybuilding and fit, fitness sort of areas that are really not supportive their industries aren't supportive at all um, there's some industries that are a bit better like you know the um, ultra endurance um, sort of ones they seem to be a bit more um, uh, accepting maybe might be too strong a word but um, seem to understand veganism a bit better than the others or um, can understand that it helps in that in that area then asked about family and friends whether they were supportive of the lifestyle or not and the most um, common question that people ask or say to them and I just found it really really um, interesting that in 2016 um, 77 people that I interviewed out of 111 in the book still get asked about their protein so you've got people that have these massive muscles and you've got people who are obviously doing quite well in whatever their field of expertise is and they're still getting asked about protein and I just find that still shocking that uh, you know in the book um, under 70 percent of people get asked about their protein so I get a bit annoyed when people ask me about their protein so I can imagine all these other people 
um, and you know, ask people about what motivates them and things that inspire them. And that was really interesting to find out that information as well. Then um, a, a popular part of the book that a lot of people seem to like is what people eat on a daily basis. So I asked, you know, what people eat for breakfast, lunch and dinners, for snacks. And then, you know, people like to hear what um, everyone's favourite sources of protein, calcium, iron and what foods give them the most energy. So there's so many different sources of protein that people list and you know my favourite is tempeh and in particular Indonesian tempeh and um, I found it just interesting what people eat for protein or what they don't eat for protein and so many people just really don't think about it at all whereas everyone else in the world seems to care about our protein. And then supplements, and um, that was some people have quite a lot of supplements that they take. Some people really don't take anything other than eating mangoes. Um, and then um, a section, another section was about advice. So a lot of people ask people all the time in whatever area they're in, you know, what's your top tip for specific things like gaining muscle, losing weight, improving metabolism, toning up. And you know these are some really good points from a lot of people and how they accomplish these things. Um, also, you know, like to know how people promote veganism in their daily life. You know, a lot of people are walking billboards for a great, a great um, example of veganism. So they listed quite a few things about that, and you know, also like to finish each interview with how people can get involved with what, with what they're doing and what they're into. Um, so, you know, I find it really interesting. I found um, the interviews that I did with people really informative and I hope you get something out of it as well. And um, make sure if you wanted to check out the book, um, my website for the books, veganathletesbook.com and um, you can have a look at the vegan guides table which is just out the door to the left I've been told and Alex is there selling the book for 12 pounds today and make sure you check out um, Robert Cheek he did the foreword so make sure you get him to sign the book and some other people who are in the book um, that I know are speaking there today Fiona Oakes, Kate Strong, Christine Vardaros and Pat Reeves and there's I know a few other people who will be there today but they're not necessarily speaking um, and I just wanted to thank people for listening today and if you would like to connect with me um, you can see my website. So I've got my vivalavegan.net website, and I've got um, I'm across all social media channels there, including Instagram now, and for my leeshontel.com website, and I'm across all other social media channels with that also. And um, I hope that you've learned something today, um, in particular about the Vegan Athletes book. And um, if you have any questions, let me know or contact me afterwards. And I hope you have a really good time at VegFest UK. And I hope to see you there next year in person. So thank you, um, organisers and everyone, for listening.